the shore of Lake Michigan on a cloudless day. Welcome, everybody. Hey, Dave. It is indeed, D.A., thank you. And Giannis earning another all-NBA nod, Bill. He'll be eligible to sign the biggest contract in NBA history this coming summer. I thought summer. you had the biggest contract after in NBA you, history. After you, after you. Oh, I've got, I'm sorry, after I'm you. confused. <laughs> well, what's funny about this is they could have signed him to the max a few years ago, and there was this rule that you could only have one guy on your team could have a five-year max, and they were saving it for Jabari Parker. Right. So they signed him for four years, $100 million, a little bit of a discount. Mm -hmm. Now he's going to make them pay. And In a big way. If I was Giannis, I would be very spiteful about the fact that they cared about Jabari more than me, and I would want to sign with the Celtics. But that's just me. Yep, I, I, that was a different GM, saying, though, at the time. Listen, it doesn't, doesn't matter who it was. Right. They didn't treat you right, Giannis. You should leave. Let's take a look at our starters for Portland. Pairing up in the backcourt, Lillard and McCullough. Little out there with Hood, and it's right side in at the five down low. And for Milwaukee, Giannis is the four with Lopez the five. Then there's Bledsoe, then it's Matthews, and it's DiVincenzo in at the shooting guard position. You got to remember, Rodney Hood, six foot eight, so he has the size needed to be a factor on the inside if he stays aggressive. Nice ball movement by Milwaukee. Here's Lopez, and denied, he sends it right off the glass. Ludzo against Lillard. He doesn't hit that one. Excellent D there from Ludzo. They're one of four here to start looking to get into a flow offensively. I mean, even from over here, you can see that one pretty clearly. Milwaukee shooting their first free throws of the game right now. And as a team, they're down around 72% for the season. Two shots. That free throw, no good. And he can't hit the second. Bill, if you were just hired as a GM, which franchise would you model your approach after? I really like what uh, the Clippers did the last couple years when they realized they didn't have quite enough to win the title. And instead of just being beholden to being darn close but not quite, they actually, like, blew it up and tried to figure out how to create cap space, find some young players. And still stay competitive. Build so the they, they kept the momentum of their franchise. Yeah. They, and they stumbled into a situation where they had a lot of flexibility no matter what. I think the Celtics before them did the same thing in the mid-2000s. They're just trying to find assets and figure mm -hmm. it out on the fly. That's the approach I would use. I, I would never fully commit one way or the other to anything. The goal is to try to accumulate assets and figure out what you have. And I think the smartest teams do that. Here's McCollum. Giannis Antetokounmpo making his last shot. Inside. And it's Little finishing it off. Yeah, the vision's one thing, but the timing also helps. Lillard prepared to get the ball to his teammate. Even Chenzo passes to Antetokounmpo. Outside Matthews. Up top, Bledso. Passes to DiVincenzo. Six on the shot clock. Takes the three. The Bucks keep it going. A new 14-second clock. to Antetokounmpo, knocked loose, and there's the shot clock violation. Couldn't get the shot off in time. Let's take a moment to see which squads have been the most dominant on the glass this season. Here are the real stats, real scores from the real NBA.
The Bucks number one. They are tenacious when it comes to attacking the backboard. Physical, smart, and determined. No surprise to see them at the top of the ranking. Now here's Hood, following the miss by Giannis Antetokounmpo. Rodney Hood, such a strong and, and physical guard. He's good at drawing the contact when he gets inside. And he's got his first free throw of the game. An 80% shooter. The work he's done at the line this season, one word, solid. Shooting two. And he can't get the first one. Now, Rodney Hood is a guy who's out here to stretch the floor and mix up his game a little bit, trying to regain some confidence in what he can provide offensively. Good on the second free throw. Here is Bloodson. They count on his contributions, currently providing 16 and a half points a game. Bill, is Damian Lillard close to becoming the best player in Blazers basketball history? I think he's close to having the best career. You know, I think his career this decade has actually become underrated. Like, he's been in the All-NBA team, I think, five times now. He's made it first team, and he's taken the team to the conference finals. He made an iconic buzzer beater shot. And, all that stuff. Bill Walton is still the best player in Blazers history. Like they won the title with Bill Walton. And I think from a ceiling talent standpoint, I'd still have Rasheed Wallace over him. Because in 99 and 2000, that team was really close to winning the title. And in 2000, they probably should have won the title. You know, and they choked in the game seven. He's not on that level. But, you know, he's he's been probably the third best point guard of this decade. It's Curry, then Chris Paul, then him. And the three ball is good. That's a great read on the pick and roll by McCollum. The defender backing up leaves him no hope of affecting that shot. They could use a big shot here to get this offense going. Too many empty possessions. Right now, they need a basket. Pass to DiVincenzo. Outside, out of the Kumbo. Shot clock at five. And the double up out of the Kumbo. And the ball's tied up, so we'll have the jump ball. Cool, cool, cool. You two players. And so here's Portland. So the Bucks, their last game, a win against the Bulls in Chicago. Yeah, mental toughness on the road. The arena was rocking, but they just got down to business and never let up. Impressive to see them on the road just step up and have that kind of offensive performance. And a nice job here early of establishing an inside presence. Alert against Bloodsoe. McCollum rebounded by the Bucks. Just doing the job on the backboard. Now the pass to Lopez. Here's DiVincenzo. He's guarded by McCollum. And oh, here we go. Lillard's got it. The fast break chance. That shot, no good. Ludzo with the defensive effort. Uh, if he's going to keep shooting, they've got to run some plays for him. Screens, pick and rolls, anything they can do to get him started. The drive by Giannis. And the slam dunk by Antetokounmpo. Watching that guy put on a burst of speed, he takes up so much of the floor. What a burst by Giannis. Bill, in the age of positionless players and positionless basketball, is there any player that, in your opinion, is more versatile than Giannis Antetokounmpo? I think KD is probably more versatile because he can basically do anything you want offensively and guard for the five positions defensively. I think what makes Giannis so unique is he's basically a center but doesn't have to play center and can play any of the five positions. But if you look at his stats last year versus any Shaq season, it's basically the same season. Mm -hmm. He's doing 27 and 13. He's protecting the rim. You don't think of him as a center, but he really is. But I think what makes him special and 
what is the next level for him is his ability to play point forward or point center on one end, but then protect the rim on the other end. And once he adds that last piece offensively, which, you know, for Kawhi, it wasn't until, like, what, 2017? And he had that. All of a sudden, he could create that little 18-footer for himself, and then he became unstoppable. That's the last piece for him. Well, the muscle of Atentacumbo is impressive. He's just destroying the defense right now. And he's got his first chance at the line here. And, guys, you might remember that he was not at his best from the foul line in their last outing. Here's what Milwaukee's going with right now. Robin Lopez is checked in for Lopez. Corver comes in for Wesley Matthews. Pat Connaughton, he's checked in for Dante DiVincenzo. And it's Hill in for Eric Bledsoe. Free throw no good for Giannis. What improvement we saw during Giannis Antetokounmpo's first few years in the league. Went from raw to ridiculous in a hurry. Now catching the lead pass at full speed, terrific anticipation. And the delivery, Kevin, on time, on target. And the slam dunk by Antetokounmpo. And guys, he's not an easy man to stop when he's got the rim in his sights. Never has been, never will be. He is a determined finisher. Here's Simons. He's coming off a 10-point game against the Rockets in Houston. And the call will be against George Hill. That's his first foul. And the Bucks making a change here. Elias Ovis checked in. Cullen passes it to Hazania. Yep, that one goes in there. And the Trailblazers lead by four. And those are the kind of nice inside looks they've gotten here in the first half. And, Bill, when you yourself get out on the court, is there a play you try to channel or emulate, you try to visualize in your mind? You mean when I'm playing pickup? Yes, yes. Oh, well, now, at this point in my life, I, it's Davos Bertans. Is that how you say his name? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Davis Burton. Davis Burton. Yeah, yes. By the way, what a great stroke. I, mean, I yeah. emulate all stretch fours and yes. don't guard anybody. Yeah. That's who I am at this point in my life. I run from three point line to three point line. You stay in the perimeter. Yeah. Don't don't tangle up inside. My free throw attempts are zero because yep. I don't go to the line. Just fire away. And I just I want you to know I'm there to make an open jump shot. And don't ask me to do anything else, please. I'll set some picks. Yeah. yeah. You are. You do a great screen. I'll set, set some picks. You're a great pick and roll. George Hill recognizing when his man was open, an effective pass that time. Portland leading by four. Here's McCollum. Good D by Lopez. Maybe a time to rest him right now, just give him a bit of a breather, try to help him get back on track. Count it. And George Hill looked pretty good going to the rim that time, not thrown off stride, and he created a nice shot opportunity. Here's Simons, and they get some nice contributions from him on a nightly basis as he averages over 11 points a game. And that one is good. mccollum has got five. That's the kind of passing you want there. Work the ball around, keep it moving, try to get an assist on every bucket. Here's Connaughton. He's been patient so far, nothing on the scoreboard yet. And that'll be two free throws coming up. Officials on the call with the foul. Milwaukee shooting their fourth and fifth attempts at the free throw line tonight. Taking two shots. Two shots. The first one falls. So he gets them both. Bill, you're a basketball historian. We know that. Um, do, do fans romanticize too much about the past? I would say the other way. I think they don't appreciate it enough. Especially, like, uh, 
the millennials and Gen Z. You know you're out there. You're playing this game right now. They tend to think the league started when Kobe showed up and that the 90s and the 80s didn't happen. I sense a real resentment from the younger fans with the LeBron versus MJ thing because LeBron's their guy. They get to watch LeBron. They don't want to hear that MJ was better than him, mm-hmm. so they make plays for LeBron and the way things are now. Well, what, what about, like, the Oscar Robertson, the Elgin Baylors? And we talked about, oh, well, yeah. my, my goodness, you talk about some of these players. Unbelievable. Yeah, the Fantastic 60s, numbers. 70s, 80s. Oh. I think part of what hurts is people can go on YouTube and when you watch some of the older stuff, nobody's playing defense. Mm-hmm. Here's Connaughton. Pass to Lopez. It's Hill on the wing. Plays it up off the glass. Hill's got his second bucket. And now you see them starting to really work the ball inside. Simons surveying the D. One thirty-one left in the first quarter of the game. Five on the clock. Dishes it to LeMessier. He's more for three. Hill pulls it in. And it's Milwaukee's ball. Big stretch here going 10-2. That's tipped. Corver dishes to Hill. Baysmore with it. it. was picked up by Hill. And the dunk by Baysmore. I like how active McCollum was there on defense. Not afraid to poke his hands in there at the right time. Very opportunistic score there. Now here is Hill. In the game against Chicago, very impressive. There's 45 seconds left in the first quarter. Lock at six. Shoots it. And there are the Bucks with another bucket. Well, he's knocking down most everything, guys. Three of four here. Looking at Portland, they want to turn it around after the loss to the Rockets in Houston. Here's McCollum. And Portland again with the bucket. Well, you give CJ that kind of shot, and he's going to knock it down. He'll exploit the defense all night long. Outside Corver. It's back to Hill. It's a four-second differential between the shot clock and game clock. Beats the shot clock, but can't get it to fall. Uh, for him, it's harder to miss that shot than it is to make. Greg, that's why his teammates love him. Absolutely. You can tell Lopez really wants to make an impact on defense, on every possession. And we hope you're enjoying the game. Both teams tonight keeping things pretty even so far on the scoreboard. And look what we've seen from Milwaukee. What do you think, guys? Well, in that first quarter, they, they were intent on just pounding the ball down low. Yeah, you don't see that all that often, getting down there and doing that much damage in a quarter. you got to respect the game plan. Here are the five. Portland has to start the second quarter. Scal the BCR out there with his own yet. Then there's McCollum. Then there's Kent Bazemore. And it's Simons in at the one spot. The game has been very close in a lot of areas, but rebounding has been the one differentiator thus far. Lopez outside. Here's Hill. The jumper from the free throw line is good. Now it's a four-point Bucks lead. And, Bill, we've seen more and more teams base their offenses around three-point shooters. Threes are at an all-time high. You know that. Should the NBA, that in mind, do anything to address this via any, any rule change which I don't know what that would mean but, but it has been talked about I don't like changing I think it's going to manifest itself with it doesn't work in the playoffs as well and teams are going to slowly realize like that you need to blend an inside outside game at least a little bit you can't lose what the game is no, it's you, bigs and smalls it's inside it's outside and, and it's still passing and unselfishness the Warriors take a lot of threes but they're the most unselfish team we have, and they create a lot of layups, and they play, you know, they're really creative. And you just can't, that just can't be your thing as we shoot 53s, here's our offense. The problem is you're still going to get in these games where two points really matters, you know, and that's what you saw with Kawhi in the playoffs last mm-hmm. year. These games slow down, it's going to be a 92-89 to 89 ending, and your team needs to get 10 baskets in the fourth quarter, no matter how you're going to get them. You still need somebody who can do that, too. 
And we've got an update here, so let's check in with David Aldridge reporting from the sideline. Well, Kevin, Chris Middleton was a first-time All-Star in 2019. Now, we all know that Middleton is one of the league's best shooters, but he had to adjust his game to a new system under coach Mike Budenholzer. Middleton said, I guess that's what being an All-Star is, a team player and a complete player. Not playing for stats, playing for nothing else but to win. Kevin? First-time All-Star and well-deserved. David, thank you. Here is Whiteson. Following the basket by George Hill. Good on that shot. And with that, the Bucks' lead is cut down to just four points in the bucket from Hassan Whiteside. Brown outside. Pass to Ilya Sova. Here's Bledsoe on the money from 12 feet away. Bledsoe's got the lead up to six now for Milwaukee. They should continue to get the ball inside. The defense struggling to contain them. Lillard scanning the floor. Outside hood. Right side against Lopez. Right side, no good. But he lacks defense there. He's going to see fewer and fewer chances if he can't bury those kind of jumpers. Fouled in the act of shooting. Gets the bucket anyway, so a three-point play chance for him. What a surge it's been for the Bucks. At the top of the Eastern Conference last year, 60 wins, the most since 1981. Right, and much like those teams from uh, from the 80s, they fell short in the end. Again. And that's been the rub with the Bucks. is, you know, as you look back at so many years in a row, so close, couldn't do it. And then this last year against Toronto, you know, they win the first two. Game three's double OT. And then all of a sudden, a week later, their season's over. So they've never quite been able to get over the hump since the days of Lou Alcindor. The nice thing is, though, this team is making the, the, the mandatory steps, it seems, that all these teams eventually have to make to get to where they want to go. Right. They are trying to keep the team together that they succeeded with last year. Sometimes when you have success, you think that you should keep that success together. And that can be dangerous because, really, I felt like that team underachieved. They lost to the Toronto team that um, they had just performed better than during the season. So what's that last piece that you need? And I guess the last piece for Milwaukee now is can Giannis be the closer? We haven't seen it yet. Well, guarding at Tentacumbo is really difficult because of how awkward he can get around the floor and how much space he can take up. Now here's Baysmore. 11 points for him in that last game against the Rockets in Houston. Uh, his passing another high point in that game. He made sure it wasn't all about him. He wanted to get his teammates involved. Here's Bledsoe. They lead by eight. That's the biggest of the game. Lopez kicks to Ante Dekumbo. And Ante Dekumbo slams it in. It was a huge night for Giannis Atentacumbo at the offensive end of the floor. That length and athleticism just proving to be too much for any defensive scheme. Now, here's Whiteside. And there's the foul on the shot. He'll go to the line for two. And there's the foul against Milwaukee. The Trailblazers shooting their third and fourth free throw shots of the night. And you really got to give them a ton of credit for what they've done at the free throw line this season. How about 82% as a unit? Shooting two. He misses the free throw. Big hands, long arms, huge frame of Whiteside. It just makes him a dominant shot blocker, a huge rim protector, and a very good rebounder. So neither attempt will fall that time for him. Plus eight in the rebound differential. One more reason why they're in control. After the Kumbo finds Bledsoe. And two free throws coming up. Unable to get that one to go with all the content. It's on Damian Lillard. It's still a blur. Bledsoe with some amazing speed on the floor. Excelling at barreling into the defense to pick up the foul. Milwaukee shooting their 7th and 8th free throw attempts for the game right here.
And the first one at the line is good. He's just such a, a bulldog out there in terms of his mentality. Eric Bledsoe can get assertive, and when he does that, it raises the level of play for the entire team. And Eric Bledsoe drops them both. Portland with the ball. A 12-point game. Looking ahead to their next game. Playing at New Orleans, they'll match up against the Pelicans. It'll be the fourth game in a seven-game road trip. But they'll get another chance. Good ball movement here by the Trailblazers. Shot clock at six. Here's Hood. Again, the miss by the Trailblazers. Shot didn't fall, but that play worked well to get a good look at the basket. Yeah, an efficient offensive possession. They found the look that they wanted, just didn't go in. The second effort. Here's Giannis, and Whiteside sends it back. When you consider just how long and how big Whiteside is down there, it's not surprising that shot blocking is something he does well. He was wide open, but just to make sure, he put a little fade on that jumper. Antetokounmpo passes to Lopez. And Lillard is going to pick up the foul. That'll be his second foul of the game. This is one where the second foul is probably going to cost you some minutes in this game. Dante DiVincenzo. He's checked in for Sterling Brown. So it's the Bucks now. Andre Kumbo kicks to Matthews. Offensive rebound. Lopez passes to Matthews. Back to Lopez. And stolen by Whiteside. An even three-on-three -three break. And a wide-open look for Hood. Off target from outside. Yeah, and they've shown effort and aggression in the paint, really, right from the tip. Their rebounding edge right now, massive. All right. Bledsoe showing you a little bit of his range. So timeout called here. The first member, and let's see how things are going out east in the early season. Taking a look at Milwaukee. Off to a great start this season, currently in second. And, and seeing where the Bucks are, they've got their sights set pretty darn high right now. After what they've done this season, their goal is nothing short of a title. A massive amount of confidence, tremendous swagger with this team, and they believe in themselves. That might be all it takes to get them where they want to go. Poked away. Six on the shot clock. Now here's Baysmore. He's guarded closely. Oh, another miss for him. Now shooting one for four from the floor. Here's on to Takumbo. And the tough by Giannis. You know how you want to tell people don't let Giannis get too close? Well, one step past half court, he's too close. Lillard the pass to Little. To the middle. Here's Whiteside. No good off the back of the rim. The defense did a really good job of choking off the middle there once he got inside. Giannis dishes the blood cell. Floats it up for Giannis. An emphatic LU jam. Every night there's something that Giannis does on the floor where you just have to put your hands on your head. Wow, what a move. Lillard outside. And just miss after miss right now. He is just really almost playing for the other team. The shooting has just been poor. Pass to Bledsoe. Puts it up from 12. Hope they get it back. Yeah, maybe a little luck, maybe a little bit of heart. Both of those at play here. He's getting every offensive rebound. Here's Giannis. Puts the fadeaway right on the money. Andre de Kumbo has got 10 points in the quarter. D has been just completely helpless and turned around. He's so dangerous when he's in this kind of rhythm. Lillard misses. No other way to put it. Just a rough quarter in terms of scoring. He has not been helping at all. Here's DiVincenzo. Good. And it's Giannis picking up the assist. 
Even Genzo's got his first three points of the game. They need a good offensive possession. Yeah, they've gone a long time without a bucket. Now a timeout called by Portland. Trying to snap them out of this little to Matthews. And it's Pat Connington in for Dante DiVincenzo. Portland also making some changes. LeBissier has checked in for Whiteside. Collin comes in for Rodney Hood. And it's Simons in for Damian Lillard. Now here's McCollum. He had 25 points last game. No good. And they can't put an end to this drought. Now Bloodsoe. And the pass to Lopez. Out left to the wing. From outside the arc. And again, Milwaukee with the triple. Well-rounded effort, and, and they show no signs of letting up. Coaching staff probably most proud of the effort of this team on both ends of the floor here tonight. Here's Simons. A rebound by the Bucks. Lopez has got his fourth rebound with that last one here tonight. With him struggling tonight, they need to find some other options out there to keep themselves in the game. Just playing with poise and confidence, and they continue to put points on the board. Yeah, just really pouring it on right now, trying to take away the opposition's motivation to keep competing in this one. Now here's McCollum. Seven points in the game. Well, you go in there weak like that, and a guy like Giannis with his length is going to throw it away. And so it's Bloodsoe with it, bringing it up for Milwaukee. And after this game wraps up, they're off to Atlanta where they'll take on the Hawks. And that will be a getaway game for them, a one-game road trip. Oh, you hear that sound? That's uh, the yep. flushing of the toilet oh. right there. <laughs> Greg, a fierce two-hander. Now here's McCollum. He's got nine. Defense, defense, defense. Lopez with the block. Oh, that's out of there. Not a high riser, but Lopez using his frame. A smart block, if you will. And Connaughton has it in the corner. Blunso taking his time here. And Labissier sends it back. They recover it. And yes, it's good. 24 points for Giannis. That's another area where Atentacupo is looking better and better. The catch and shoot jump shot. Bill, we so appreciate you stopping by, spending some time with us. Always feels like uh, there's so much more to talk about, which means we got to get you back here if you don't mind. Yeah. We'll look forward to that. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> You know, Brent, it's a different kind of broadcast with Bill Simmons mic'd up. He lets it rip. Well, the thing about Bill is he's not going to hold back. He has some great, strong opinions, and he backs it up with a, a lot of facts due to the fact that he knows the history of the game quite well. McCollum finds Bazemore. Simons. And so the ball goes out of bounds. Lopez touched it last. Lopez, he's checked in for the Bucks. Hill comes in for Eric Bledsoe. Mario Hezonias checked in for the Trailblazers. Forty-four seconds left to play here in the house. A nice shot by Simons. And how about the vision from Labissiere? Easily spotting his teammate in a great spot. And the double up on a Dacumbo. Wide open. But they recover it. Misses off the left iron. Simons, the pass to Little. The lead pass was put in just the right spot. Little's got four this quarter. And guys, they continue to put a lot of pressure on the interior defenders with their work down low. Here's Connaughton, and the basket is good. And there's a pattern starting to take shape here. They're working it inside and getting good shots from close range. This will be his third free throw shot of the game. On the free throw, no good. The Trailblazers shooting in the second quarter has been pretty embarrassing, just 27%. Now McCollum a blur that time in transition, a quick-footed guard who runs the floor like a gazelle. Down low, and Lopez throws it down. Of all the action happening there, Kevin, it's the assist that jumps out to me there. That's just a great look and a great setup for the bucket. 
Giannis Antetokounmpo, he's feeling it tonight and has been the driving force for the Milwaukee Bucks. His stat line has been terrific. As the quarter ends, he's already got a double-double. And now let's catch up with David Aldridge, who's standing by from the sideline. All right, Dave, we've got a second half of basketball for you. We think it's going to be pretty good. A big comeback, though, is needed for this game to be competitive, and it probably has to happen quickly. Replay angles are interesting, Brent. Instant feedback on social media. Talk about the increased pressure now on referees to get every call right. Well, so many times, Kevin, on nights where you're working games, you sit there for a minute and a minute and a half. In super slow motion looking at the play. And, and still sometimes hard to get it right. Very hard. What I think the league should think about doing with the competition committee is every team in the league should have three and four cameras that are mounted so that every time there's a replay at any given arena they have access to the same angle for where, every game every game where are most of the times these calls being missed where are these calls getting wrong and how is it that we can implement some technology to help us not only get it right more often which is the most important thing but also fair and balanced vision for the referees to have an opportunity to do so what an excellent idea Giannis is the four with Lopez the five then it's Matthews, then there's Bledsoe, and it's DiVincenzo in at the two. They're the group for Mike Budenholzer starting the second half. And keeping us updated from the sideline, let's swing it over to David Aldridge. Well, Kevin, tampering is a touchy subject, but it's a word we're hearing more often. Teams want to retain their star players, but they know that there's always talk during a season. Now, teams can only express interest in a player when he hits free agency. Players can talk amongst each other freely all season. Star players like LeBron James are tied into their front offices. And some people wonder if there's much of a difference between what the player says and what his team is thinking. Kevin? Good point, David. Thank you. Here's Lillard following the basket by Giannis. Lillard with the bucket. Well, there are scorers and then there are confident scorers. Lillard so dangerous with the jumper, the floater, getting to the rack, you name it. One of the bright stars in the NBA. Now, here's Adetokounmpo. 30 points in the game. Here's McCollum. He blocks it again. Uh, a defensive stalwart so far. That's six blocks. Greg protecting the rim. Love the hustle. And the dunk by Giannis. Well, him dominating the offensive end is what accounts for this lead. Just a very difficult guy to stop once he gets going. Outside hood. Lillard with no one around. From outside, off the mark. Well, even though he misses that one, the defense has got to talk about that, Kevin. That's a bad miscue. And you can't give up looks like that all game long. Now, here's Matthews. Looking at his numbers, he's averaging about uh, six and a half points a game. Lopez with the bucket. They're getting on a roll inside. Their last three field goals have come from the paint. They need a bucket in a big way here to regain some confidence. Here's McCollum. 14 points for him. Shot is good off the back rim and in. McCollum's got 16. Now CJ operating like a surgeon out there tonight. And what so? Here we go. Shooting foul as the whistle blows. He'll shoot two free throws. They get Hassan Whiteside. No question, he got bumped on that shot. And Brent, when you watch Eric Bledsoe go to the rim, you just have to admire what an incredible finisher he is. Well, Bledsoe, I think, has always relied on the fact that his physical stature, not in terms of his height at 6'1", but his width and strength allows him to go in there and be Shoot a bit two. of a bulldog to get contact and to make things happen. So never has shied away from that. First one falls for him. Well, the Milwaukee Bucks are just so strong in and around the paint. Well, so good last year. The team was third in points in the paint themselves and first in points in the paint allowed last year. That means they got in there and then they defended it well. Tough as nails defensively causes a lot of problem for teams who rely on chippies around the basket to get themselves on the offensive flow. Bledsoe hits them both. And since coming to the box, Eric Bledsoe hasn't been asked to do nearly as much as he has in the past. And for Bledsoe, that is a good thing, as he is best 
as a complimentary player. Not scoring as much, but his decision-making and shot selection have vastly improved. The defense is tough as it comes right there. He's a hard man to deny when he gets the ball to the rim. Milwaukee's gone three of seven tonight from three-point territory. We've gone about three and a half minutes into the third now. Hood against Matthews. Hood kicks to Lillard. For three, bangs home the trifecta. Lillard's got seven now in this quarter. Well, the defense very attentive to him in the first quarter, but he's finally gotten loose in the second and making them pay. Pass to Matthews. Tried to answer back, but that three is off the mark. And here's Lillard. He brings it up for the Trailblazers. McCollum with the ball. 16 points for him. Count it. McCollum's got 18 points in the game. How about CJ's focus on that play? The defense right up in his face, keeps his eyes on target, and buries it. It's out of the Kumbo on the wing. And a great assist by Bunso as that one goes in. 34 points for Giannis out of the Kumbo. Bunso against Lillard. Inside. And it's sent back by Lopez. And now in transition is Bunso. Here we go. Count that one. 15 points in the game. How many times have we seen a possession like that from them today? Ending with a basket, coming off a pretty pass. Put on the wing. Six to shoot. And he could not get that one to go. A lot of contact, and he'll go to the line for two. And drafted by the Jazz in 2014, Rodney Hood seemed to establish himself in Utah. But Brent, as we saw last year, he finished up well with Portland. Well, a great job by Neil O'Shea picking Rodney Hood up and had some big games in the playoffs. He's part of a collaborative at the wing position now for Portland where Terry Stotts can use the likes of Rodney Hood and Kent Bazemore to play a lot of switching defenses and continue to make teams have to guard as Hood's capable of making threes and making plays off the bounce. No good on the free throw. Brent, when it comes to moving around in tight quarters without a lot of space, who's the quickest player that you have seen in a half-court set this year? It's still remarkable to watch where it is that Kyrie Irving can get to on the floor in any sort of possession. It's like he could take, you know, 50 dribbles in a phone booth and find a way out of it spinning around and, and finding gaps within the defense. What a handle. But, oh. but it's not his handle with just the one hand, right, Kevin? It's no. about he has an idea of after he does the moves around the traffic, when he gets into the basket, multiple ways of finishing, much like Rod Strickland, who was a tremendous uh, finisher in his days years and years ago. Kyrie's got a lot of that in his game. The Bucks have missed out on some chances at the line today, 0-6 of 11. At the line for two. Shooting two. He's off on the first. You go back to 2015, the Blazers lost four of their five starters in the offseason. So instead of rebuilding, they retooled around Damian Lillard. And what a piece to retool behind. Amazing how far they've come in the past couple seasons where they've placed in the Western Conference. And the Trailblazers making a change here. Baysmore is checked in, and he sinks the second. Well, you know, Brent, you've got to give a lot of credit to the Blazers front office continuing to fortify this roster with under-the-radar acquisition. Interesting adjusting around a couple of Albatross contracts to now have a team that's capable 
at positions that a lot of teams are trying to fill. That's the wing position. And stolen by Hizonia. McCollum left side. And the Trailblazers getting another bucket right there. The Bucks have gone 7 of 11, a lucky field goal percentage here in the third. Bledsoe against Lillard. To the middle, here's Giannis. Good, and Bledsoe gets the assist. Bledsoe's got six assists here tonight. Just how awesome is it to watch the best of the best start to dominate in a game? In for Lopez. Iliasova comes in for Antetokounmpo. Pat Connaughton, he's checked in for Wesley Matthews. And it's Hill in for Eric Ludso. Scal LaBissiere's checked in for the Trailblazers. Here's Hazania. He's got that long reach, Iliasova does, so right up there to bother a shot like that. Brown against McCollum. To the inside, Connaughton. A shot's good. Brown making the play. Connaughton's got nine. Well, that's how you draw it up right there. A screen to shed the defense. A quick move to the bucket. And you get the lay-in. Baysmore with it. Picked up by Brown. And here's Baysmore. He's averaging just around eight and a half points a game. Comes up empty down low. Here's Connaughton. Lopez outside. Down to five on the shot clock. And it's going to be out of bounds. The Trailblazers will take it. And while we have a chance, here are the teams that have swatted away the most shots this season. The Bucs second. I mean, terrific rim protection. I mean, they rotate and help on the inside as well as anybody. And, of course, you want to keep offenses on the outside shooting jump shots. And that continues to be the goal. Lillard against Brown. Lillard, the pass to Bazemore. Shoots from the elbow. That's good on the jump shot. Bazemore's got his third bucket of the night. Now the coaching staff asking a lot of Kent Bazemore, especially there, to play in the pick and roll. He jumps on that available space on the pick and cashes in. Passes it to Hill. to Ilyasova. Just his first attempt. And no good that time. And the Trailblazers going the other way. Baysmore finds Lillard. Pulls up. And good. Got the friendly bounce off the right side of the rim. He's got 13. Yeah, the chemistry has been terrific. Really impressed with their offensive execution. Lopez right side. That one is good. He's only missed one shot of his six taken on the floor. And at 277 pounds, Lopez absorbs contact well. Difficult to deter him on the way up. That's a two from Lillard. Again, the Trailblazers score. Nothing better than a hustle plate like that. It gets the whole team amped up. Sets the example for everyone. Now here's Ilyasova. Still getting warmed up offensively. No scoring yet from him. And credit the screen for giving him the space he needed to get to the rim. For sure, GA allows him to come in with the sledgehammer. Yeah, why well, settle for the layup when you can attack the rim and rise up like that? Here's Labissier after the basket by Milwaukee. McCollum, no good. D giving him that shot, and that's probably not a good idea, but I guess they knew what they were doing that time. McCollum against Brown. The pass to Lopez. The shot's good. Brown making the play. Lopez has got 12 in the game. And they are attacking the rim and getting great results. McCollum finds LeBissier. Takes a three. Rebound, Milwaukee. Elias has got four rebounds in this game. Yeah, the defense there in chill mode. We all know he can burn them from three-point range. Hill against Lillard. 
The kick out to Ilyasova. Over McCollum. Ilyasova can't hit. Portland's gone one of three from downtown since halftime. Brown against McCollum. He dishes it to Lillard. And the call will be against Robin Lopez. That'll be his second foul of the game. Kyle Korver, he's checked in for the Bucks, And the Trailblazers making a change here as well. Simons, he's checked in for McCollum. And now, here's Hizonia, defended by Ilya Sova. Bucket is good. He's got eight. I just think that's trouble. You're going you're gonna to let that guy shoot layups? You're asking for it. Well, Mike Budenholzer winning the coach of the year for the second time just has such a great mind offensively and came in with a, a new system for this entire roster, one that they embraced very early on. I think it was really important last year, training camp, establishing that type of confidence. It carried them through for the entire year. Now here is Hill. 12 points for him. Pass to Lopez. It's back to Hill. Lock at six. And it's out of bounds. The Bucks able to retain possession here. Forty seconds left in the third quarter of the game. And Lopez gets it to go. Comfortable shooting close to the basket. The size Lopez possesses gives him confidence down low. Three-pointer Lillard. Rebound Milwaukee. Eliasova has got five rebounds tonight. Corver against Bazemore. Corver dishes to Hill. Lillard comes with the double team. Here's Connaughton. They get it back. Lopez. The second effort. And he lays it up and in. Lopez has got eight here in the quarter. A, a guy that doesn't give up on the glass. Lopez, a real force at rebounding the ball. And so we drop it down the stretch as we head into the fourth quarter. But stranger things have happened. All fueled up and ready to go. Let's reset the lineups courtesy of Gatorade for the fourth quarter. On the court for the Trailblazers, they've got Anthony, also LaVissier out there, and it's Horde in at the three, the small forward. And giving up some inches inside, but makes up for it with an aggressive style. Yeah, the big man not going to slow him down from getting that deuce. Passes it to Corfield. A three-pointer, no good. The Trailblazers shooting a mediocre 41% in this one. Pass to Simons. Not many players now signing shorter contracts and free agency. You've talked about this a lot. Does it make it harder or easier for the super teams? Well, I think it, it makes it easier because all of a sudden a, a star player from another team becomes available that you could latch him on to somewhere else. Any examples that. you could throw out there? That, that I don't want to get into the specifics. Okay, of it. I, I, I understand. I think I understand. we've <laughs> seen it over the past three or four years uh, with some of our star guys. And yes. I, don't, I don't fault them because they're getting smarter. Players are a lot smarter about what it is that they can do with having the very few times, Kevin, that you have a say in your career as to where it is that you're going to play and more importantly, the potential for what it is that financially playing you can four, make. But, and playing for a championship. For a championship, for potentially the opportunity to play with somebody who you've always thought you could either elevate their play or they could elevate yours. This is not going away anytime soon. Mm -hmm. And good on the second, so he makes them both. The Bucs shooting a tremendous 61% from the floor, hitting at all cylinders. Here's DiVincenzo. Shot clock at six. Here's Wilson. No good there. Anthony with the defensive effort. So it's Portland now. Here in the fourth quarter, their defense has been very strong, allowing no baskets. Here's DiVincenzo. 
Now the pass to Bender. Fourth quarter now. We're about a minute and a half in. Shoots. Milwaukee, no good that time either. Here's Trent. Pass to Simons. Here's Anthony. Over Wilson. And Portland again with the bucket. And Mello operating in the mid-range. He does such a great job of finding open areas out there where he knows he can dominate. Here's DiVincenzo. Stolen. And here we go. Trailblazers with a fast break. Good on the shot. Simons has got eight here in the quarter. Not sure which clips they watched at halftime, but he has figured out how to attack the D, and they kept him in check in the first half. He's flipped it. Anthony with the block. How about Mello rising up quick to that one there? Nice shot block. A nice shot by Simons. Simons has got 10 points in just the second half. Now it feels like the other four guys have disappeared at this point. He wants to be the one to get them back. Timeout called the Bucks. Well, you know, the NBA, not the only league with great players. Bo comes in for DJ Wilson. Matthews, he's checked in for Kyle Korver. And it's Eric Bledsoe in for Pat Connington. Passes it to DiVincenzo. And the Bucks miss again. Nobody even close to him, and he can't believe he doesn't knock it down. Outside hood. Pass to Whiteside. Some solid defense from Kumbo. And the effort never stops with him. No easy shots when he's on the floor. Well, it's about the defensive end, and that's what guys feed off. He gives the effort down there at all times. And it's in there. And with that basket right there, it brings an end to that 12-0 run by the Trailblazers. And a little over three and a half minutes in the books so far here in the fourth. There's the pass to Hood. Here's Simons. Fires for three. Wide side, the pass to Little. And it's McCollum in the corner. Just five on the clock. Fires the three. Milwaukee with the rebound. And close to making the defense pay for the lax coverage that time. Now Giannis. Shock up two there. Andre de Kumbo has got 38 points. He's played a huge role in this game to this point, but it looks like he just wants more. He wants to make sure that this lead holds up. It's McCollum on the wing. Puts up a three. The Trailblazers with a new shot clock. And the ball travels out of bounds. It was last touched by Whiteside. The Bucks making a switch here. Browns checked in. And the Trailblazers making a change here as well. Tolliver's checked in. And so it's Milwaukee now. Bloodsoe outside. Good for basket number six from him in the contest. He's shooting six for 12. And how about the physique of Eric Bledsoe there? Terrific at sticking it to the defense even when he gets pinballed around a bit. Little with the ball. Pass to Whiteside. Five to shoot over Lopez. No good on the fadeaway. And when you can't get anything to fall, it definitely gets in your head. Especially if you're a player that doesn't get a lot of shot attempts. But otherwise, the mindset is, I just got to get the next one to go. And you don't want to put that much pressure on yourself. Here's Simons, guarded by Bledsoe. And it's Simons missing. Buck shooting has been outstanding in this game at 58%. And they double up Giannis. Pass to Brown. Loads it up for Giannis. Takes the alley-oop pass and dunks it down. Yeah, letting it rip. They're just having fun right now. 
Yeah, some of these nights you got to enjoy yourself. Not too much at the expense of the other team, but right now this team is balling. Whiteside, and again, unable to change momentum here. And up the court come the Bucks on the break. No good on the three. Portland's gone ice cold from three-point land 0-4 since the start of the final quarter. And here's Little. Pass to Tolliver. Now here's Little. The pass to Simons. Good on the three-point shot. Simons has got 13 points in just this quarter. Now he's going to punish you, Kevin, if you leave him open. He's more than willing to take the open three when he's got it. And it's blocked by Whiteside. Here's Little. Tolliver the pass to Simons. And that one is off. Good D by Bloodsoe. The Bucks shooting a pedestrian 36% in the fourth quarter. The offense not doing their best work of late. Here's DiVincenzo. Covered by Hood. DiVincenzo passes to Bloodsoe. Good for basket number seven tonight on a not-so-unlucky 13 shots. Their interior has been inferior defensively. It has got to tighten up. Hood drives in. Goes up and lays it nice and easy. And he's going to have to do a little bit more work on Rodney Hood. Pay a little bit more attention. Pass to Lopez. Brent, when, we, when a team hires a new coach, what tends to be the feelings of the players in that locker room, knowing there's a new voice in it? If you are a veteran player, you have the opportunity, more than likely, Kevin, to call five or six resources that know who that coach is. Because most of the time, coaches that are getting hired have previous NBA experience. If you're a younger player, you're looking at uh, what it is that's being written and said about that coach to try to evaluate how it is that you're going to fit in. The biggest responsibility, Kevin, is that new coach trying to get as many of those players into the facility or at a meeting or at a dinner to have them understand from day one, as soon as possible, what it is that they're about, what it is he's expecting from them, and how it is he's going to go about them. Then all the other things about guesswork, those go away. Right. All about communication. That communication and communication as quick as you possibly can. That's an important factor. Schedule, yes. And it's Bunso with the ball for the Milwaukee Bucks. He kicks it to Lopez. Back to Bunso. Fouled on the shot and picks up two points. So one free throw coming up. And it's coming easy for them right now. Five baskets in a row in the paint. Well, he coined the name himself last season. Brent, are you willing? <laughs> are you willing to call Brooke Lopez Splash Mountain? I am, <laughs> but I think Brooke Lopez was also looking for some kind of deal so that him and his brother could get free rides for the rest of their lives. One shot. And last season for the Blazers, all about bouncing back from their embarrassing first-round sweep at the hands of the Pelicans. Well, that was definitely a motivator, and I think they put that to bed, wanted to focus on being the best team that they could be towards the end of last season. And that Nurkic injury really took some wind out of their sails, but they continued to compete and still made noise in the postseason. Here's Bledsoe. And the shot goes down. Bledsoe's got 11 here in this quarter alone. Wow, that's something else there. A small guard like Bledsoe in there with the second chance hoop. That's physicality. Simons, the pass to Trent. And the Trailblazers, another three. Yeah, kind of like playing in the rec league. Little to no defense on that possession. And the easiest three-pointer you can imagine. Bledsoe kicks to Wilson. Brown outside. Corver against Anthony to the wing on the left. Bucks passing it around. 
And there's Corver on the assist by Brown. Brown's got assist number five here tonight. Well, I guess the D didn't read the scouting report that you can't let Corver get free from the perimeter. Passes it to Trent. Shoots the three. Eric Bledsoe with the rebound. Bledsoe's got five rebounds tonight. You know, Brent, something uh, other major sports do, receding during the playoffs. So the highest seeds always will play the lowest seeds. And uh, do you think the NBA should go down that road? I think the consideration will still be there. I think that conversation is going to happen over the course of the next two or three years. I don't see it changing in that time, Kevin. But it's, it's healthy to continue the dialogue to the point where maybe we do get there. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to end up in the record books as a blowout, a dominating performance for the Bucks. It was a standout performance across the board. I mean, it was like watching a cat play with a mouse. They, they were able to do more or less whatever they wanted. And so that moves their record to 11 wins on the year. And once it becomes official, this win gives them a nice confidence boost against this team. They'll face them twice more this season. And you know, when you look at the huge impact he had, just a monster game for Giannis. It looked like a couple times they might be wearing him down, but not the case. At the offensive end, he was just devastating. Wilson kicks to Bledsoe. Floats one up. The rebound by Simons. The Blazers on offense. Eight second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Trent gets the bucket. Well, at this point, they're just trying to get back in sync. You, you want to play a good brand of basketball. And consistency definitely is a, a key to some of the playoff performing teams. And tonight, they just did not find it in this contest. Bloodsoe. Bender dishes to Bloodsoe. Outside Corver. Pass to Wilson. And so it's the Bucks taking care of business in this one. They poured it out tonight. Dominant showing in front of the crowd.